All right, and good evening. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin, and we'll kind of get things started here, detailing a little bit more of Hurricane Delta. I know a lot of folks are a little bit more disconcerted, one, because it has been such an active season, two, this now is the sixth time we have found ourselves under the cone of error, cone of uncertainty. And also, three, a lot of folks thought, we're in October, we've had a cold front, we've actually had a couple of cold fronts, I thought we were done. Not really how it works. If you can time those cold fronts, especially in early October, yes, it does tend to block tropical systems. But unfortunately, we don't have any cold fronts headed our way over the next several days, really going past this weekend. And one, though, benefit from those cold fronts is that it sent our temperatures along the coast, our sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, into the 70s, which is going to be a huge player and sometimes not always accurately forecasted by computer models in the eventual intensity of the storm up to landfall. Now, there are still a great deal of unknowns with the future of the storm. One, consider it is still in the Caribbean, not even to the northwestern Caribbean, not in the Gulf of Mexico. So there is still a lot that could happen between now and Wednesday morning when it is expected to get into the Gulf. Not likely to see too many unknowns as one, the upper atmosphere is fairly conducive for further intensification and two, water temperatures in the Caribbean are very warm. Not only that, it's very deep warm water. So you go down into the uh, uh, below the surface in the Caribbean, you still find water temperatures over 80 degrees, which is what you need to maintain the strength. Northern Gulf of Mexico, and we'll show you this in a second, are in the 70s. So off the Louisiana coast, temperatures have come way, way down. So let's take a look at what's going on right now and kind of what we know at the moment before we start to tackle some of the more unknowns. It is now a hurricane with winds of 75 miles an hour gusting up to 85. Motion west-northwest and that forward motion west-northwest or even northwest not really going to change over the next several days and we'll explain why in a second. Pressure is currently at 980. Now, as I mentioned, this is the 7 o'clock advisory. Not a huge surprise that the uh, winds have come up to 75 and that we now find ourselves with a hurricane. They've been watching on satellite just for the last several hours. And without even looking at the reconnaissance from the hurricane hunters, you notice that those cloud tops continue to blossom and intensify. That is showing you where those intense storms are still developing around the center. So it is an intensifying storm. It had been on the cusp of being a hurricane, so not a huge surprise that we now find the winds of 75 miles an hour. The forecasted track, as I mentioned, we're not really going to see that change dramatically, and we're really not interested, to be honest, in the next uh, day and a half or so, because it really won't be until we see the storm enter the Gulf that we really start to pay a little bit more attention to the forecast track. So next couple of days, we're expecting it to reach probably around the Cancun area sometime late Tuesday, early Wednesday as a major hurricane and certainly not good news. I know a lot of New Orleanians that travel down to Cancun. A lot of the cruise ships that leave the port of New Orleans head down to the Cancun area. So a lot of locals very familiar with this part of the Yucatan and in Mexico. And it does look like it's going to be far closer to the Yucatan than and originally uh, had been expected. There was at one time it looked like we might actually see the storm move more toward the west coast of Cuba. And then it was more toward the Yucatan Strait and now more toward the Yucatan itself, which I'll explain may not necessarily be a terrible thing for us. Not that we wish these storms on anyone, but we do have to look out for our folks in southeast Louisiana, southern Mississippi. Now, as we get into a major hurricane into the southern Gulf, what, do we see, what happens after that? Well, continues along that northwesterly track before eventually turning north. When does it turn north? That's going to be the big question. And notice we're not really going to know until we get into Thursday. And that's when we may start to see some impacts into Southeast Louisiana later in the day on Thursday. But also notice, winds coming down. It's back to a Category 2, down to a Category 2, but winds of 100 miles an hour once near the coast. Again, it is likely that we'll start to see some upwelling of uh, rather cool temperatures in the Central Gulf. Temperatures there are still around 80 degrees, but it's not a very deep layer of warm temperature, uh, warm water. And then once it is in the uh, or along the coast of Louisiana or the northern Gulf Coast, water temperatures are in the 70s. That, too, is going to help to weaken the storm further. Notice that the error could be anywhere from Beaumont to almost Panama City, Florida. Not quite to Panama City, kind of between Panama City, Fort Walton Beach area is where we may see this make landfall. And there's also the chance that it's outside of the cone. There is always that possibility 
that the error lies outside of even the margin of error that is being dictated by the National Hurricane Center. So also something to keep in mind. The forecast or the uh, forecast of the storm is going to keep it over very warm, deep water. That's going to continue even into the southern Gulf of Mexico. Once it moves more into the central Gulf, those water temperatures get more low 80s. Now, yes, that is still conducive for maintaining the strength, but this is not deep, warm water. And as I mentioned, as it gets closer to the northern Gulf Coast, boy, those water temperatures have come way, way down. That is thanks to, one, some of the upwelling from our previous tropical systems, and two, our cold front. So though we don't have a cold front on the horizon this week, that would be great if we did. We don't, but at least we do have the benefit of having those cold fronts last week, and temperatures are going to be responding in accordingly. And again, along the water or along the coast, Sea surface temperatures are in the 70s right now. So here's the steering and what we're looking at. We have a big upper ridge. Now, this upper ridge is kind of helping to push the storm generally toward the northwest or so, west, northwest, northwest. But what's going to happen as we get into the uh, first half of the week, models are hinting at these, the high strengthening and pushing more over Florida. That would keep that northwesterly motion going. Also, you see this little spin right here? near the Yucatan, this is what is left over from the circulation associated with gamma. Amazing that that circulation is still going to be there. And what that circulation may also help to do is almost kind of, we call, we talked about this early in the season with Marco and Laura in the Gulf, the Fujiwara effect. And what may actually happen is that the circulation around gamma actually kind of flings delta a little bit more to the west. And again, as I mentioned, that is not necessarily a bad thing because the further west it goes before feeling the influences of this, an upper trough that we're going to see developing over Texas. Now, at the moment, it doesn't appear as though this trough is going to be particularly strong. So it's possible that the trough is weak enough and the high is strong enough that it actually pushes Delta even farther to the west, and perhaps we're talking about, and again, we don't wish this on these folks, but we may be talking about more Texas or the Texas state line or even southwest Louisiana. So that is why that is still not out of the realm of possibilities. Due to the forecast of this upper high building in, I'm thinking less likely that we're going to see the storm move more to our east, which would be for us our best case scenario. That's what we would like to see. That, I think, is probably not as likely as more west. And I will say, we started to see a little bit more of a uh, grouping of the European models more to the west. Now, the GFS, which is the American model, still grouping more toward central or southeast Louisiana. And we'll see what happens as we get into the next couple of days. Again, remember, this is still a storm that is not yet in the Gulf of Mexico, and there will be changes to the forecast. Upper trough finally wins out, pulls the storm inland and quickly moves it away and improving conditions as we head into the weekend. There is still some uncertainty with the models. And this is noon on Friday. The Euro and the GFS still have the storm off the coast, but eventually moving northward. Notice the Euro would have the placement a little bit more south of southwest Louisiana and the uh, GFS maybe a little bit more south of uh, Vermilion Bay. So more south central Louisiana as opposed to southwest Louisiana. Again, it's still very early in the forecast models, and there will be some changes going forward. The models, though, again, when does it make that turn? If it turns a little bit later, and I was kind of using earlier newscast, 90 west. Uh, New Orleans is at 30 degrees north and 90 degrees west. I was kind of using 90 west as a little bit more of a benchmark as we get into the next um, uh, several days. Really, we're not going to know until notice Thursday, midday, before it ever makes any kind of a turn. If during the day Thursday, it is still moving northwest and not yet making a turn north, then it will be more likely that we would see this maybe toward the Houston area or southwest Louisiana. If it starts making that more northerly turn near 90 west, then it may be more south central Louisiana or southeast Louisiana that is impacted by the storm. Because notice, there is, yes, that kind of sharp uh, jog in the models and uh, wait to be seen if it actually, the storm makes that sharp of a turn. If it's moving farther, rather quickly and a fairly strong storm, it's gonna take a lot to make that turn very dramatic. So again, that's why I'm saying it, probably a more likely westward than eastward trend in the models going forward. That's just me right now looking at what I've been seeing 
And this is, again, solely based on computer models. That is not taking into account what is actually going to happen once the storm reaches the Gulf of Mexico. So again, just kind of an overview of, you can still see that circulation. This is uh, now losing a little bit of daylight energy because this is a uh, uh, visible satellite. But that circulation left over is gonna play a role in the future path of Delta, as well as notice the lack of cloud cover. There's still some pretty dry air, not only across the Gulf of Mexico, but also across the Northwestern Caribbean. It'll be uh, yet to be seen what that actually does to impact the future of Delta. So I'm going to go back to our satellite imagery here. I can uh, jump on here, see if anyone has any comments, questions, concerns, um, issues as, uh, as we, uh, you know, kind of uh, wrap things up here. Again, I'm just, uh, as folks are glad I'm showing what's steering the system. And again, when I'm talking about the steering, that is all computer model driven. We'll see if those steering currents actually come to fruition. The upper high, the strength of the high, how far into the Gulf of Mexico does the high build? And also that upper trough, does it deepen fast enough that it would start pulling the storm to the north? Uh, does it maybe stay fairly weak and not really impact the storm until more Friday before turning north? And thus, it's more of a Texas southwest Louisiana storm. Again, we would still be on the wetter side, but it would take the risk of tropical storm force and certainly hurricane force winds away from us as well. So uh, that's just kind of a, a, a quick overview of the storm. Again, we are doing this a little bit more early in terms of these more detailed Facebook Live posts. Usually we don't start to do this until we're getting a, a little bit closer to maybe a bit more of a known landfall. As again, the storm was just declared a tropical storm at 7 a.m. this morning. 12 hours later, we have a hurricane we get to see what happens in the next 12 to 24 hours and certainly before it makes it into the southern Gulf of Mexico. Once in the southern Gulf, very, very likely, I'd say a 90 percent chance or more of this becoming a major hurricane before actually reaching the Gulf of Mexico. And then once in the southern Gulf, we'll start to see how the storm is interacting with the upper steering. Does it continue in the Thursday along that more northwesterly track? When does the trough actually start building down from Texas and begin turning the storm more to the north? We're also going to start to see the storm turning north because of the motion or because of the pattern around the upper high. Jumping back over there to our kind of upper steering guidance here. Again, as the upper high builds in, eventually the upper high is not going to be pushing that. It's not going to be allowing a northwesterly motion. It's going to start being more of a northerly motion to the storm. It's going to be a southerly uh, flow, but a northerly motion to the storm. Exactly when that occurs is still very much an unknown because we're now looking at Thursday timing. We're still on Monday, so we still have all day tomorrow to see what it does in the Caribbean. Early into Wednesday, once it makes it into the southern Gulf of Mexico, and then kind of through the day Wednesday and into Thursday as to where this storm may track. As I mentioned, just based on some of the models and that high building in, I would venture to say we're not going to really see as much of a trend back east, which would be better for us. It may be more west over the next several days. So we will wait and see if that trend actually continues. Um, let's see. Um, oh, goodness gracious. Uh, former uh, co-worker Renee his daughter is getting married on the lakefront of Mandeville Saturday. Actually, Saturday, not looking bad as the storm is going to be moving fairly quickly uh, once in the Gulf and once inland. It should be moving through fairly quickly, so we'll actually see improving conditions. I'm a little bit more worried about my brother. My youngest brother, Brad, is getting married on Friday in Mandeville. Well, his uh, biggest brother, biggest and oldest brother, is uh, probably unfortunately not going to be able to make it. So I'm, I'm hoping he's able to work everything out to, I'm being selfish here, postpone the wedding a little bit so I can go. And I'm supposed to read. I, I, I can't do that on Zoom. Maybe I can just do, do it on Zoom. I don't know. But yeah, a lot of events that are coming up uh, Thursday, Friday, probably need to be postponed as it does look like we're definitely going to get the rain and wind. How much of it is still very much a question. If it moves far enough to our west, which, as I mentioned, is still very much a possibility, we may not see as much of those impacts, which is why if you've been watching any of my newscasts, I didn't really delve too much into the rainfall totals, the winds and all that, because it is still a 
huge unknown at this time. So we'll wait and see as we get a little bit closer um, as to uh, what could possibly um, uh, impact us once we know a little bit more as to the potential landfall. And again, that may not really be known until we get into Wednesday and maybe not really more into Thursday once the storm begins making that term. Someone else has also asked what's actually going to cause it to weaken uh, before landfall. Well, it's going to be uh, one, that upper trough could provide for some wind shear, could also introduce some drier air, but more than anything, it's the water temperature. Water temperatures in the central Gulf are only hovering around 80, 82 degrees. And though that is warm enough to maintain that strength, it's not optimal for more rapid intensification. Again, this is not a September storm. This is not an August storm. The conditions in the Gulf of Mexico are not where they were just a couple of weeks ago. Temperatures along the Gulf Coast have come way, way down. And I'm talking sea surface temperatures. They're in the 70s. That is too cool to maintain or strengthen a tropical system. That is why it looks like it will be weakening as it approaches land. How much it weakens, still very much a question. And a lot of folks have made the uh, very uh, astute observation that we may be looking at a major hurricane weakening. So we may still have maybe a bit more of a storm surge than we would from perhaps a landfalling two or maybe even category one. This could become a three. And I don't want to say, but just to uh, put that out there, that it's possible it could be even stronger than that. Uh, that is not out of the realm of possibilities. As I mentioned, the next uh, day and a half will be uh, key in, in terms of its intensity. Really, it's going to be past um, really it's going to be past um, Wednesday into Thursday that we'll have a better idea of the track and a, a landfall of the storm. So next day and a half, it's really going to be playing more into the intensity of the storm, not really playing too much into the track because we're not expecting that turn toward the north until uh, more Thursday, late Wednesday and into Thursday, once more into the southern and central Gulf of Mexico. So uh, a few folks are asking about some of the history. Uh, yeah, it was uh, October that we had Hurricane Michael make landfall in Panama City. But again, Hurricane Michael made landfall well to the east of southeast Louisiana because we had a cold front moving through. Not often. It's very rare that we get a major hurricane making landfall in the northern Gulf Coast because by this time of year, we've started to get cold fronts. Now, we can still get major hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico in October, but for those to move toward Texas and Louisiana as a strong storm are not as, historically speaking, as common because at this point in the season, we've already started to get cold fronts. Water temperatures have started to come down. Conditions just aren't as optimal for further strengthening. So I hope that was able to answer everyone's question. Again, we're going to have a new track, new information coming up on Eyewitness News at 10. Uh, if you're watching on CBS, we're currently in an NFL game. I believe after the game, we're going to show one of my favorite shows, uh, Big Brother. And we're not going to interrupt that, but I am going to come on for a quick two-minute hit. We'll also do a little bit more uh, extended update on Facebook at 10 o'clock. And then we'll have complete coverage on Eyewitness News coming up after Big Brother. So that won't be until a little bit later on. Uh, this evening. So uh, I hope uh, everyone has a quiet again. It's very pleasant outside. Hopefully everyone has a fairly nice night and uh, you still have time to prepare for this. Again, we're not really going to see conditions start to go downhill until late Thursday and then Friday being kind of our uh, worst day and how bad it gets will depend on where the storm eventually makes landfall. For now, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Beck.